Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is the kickoff to our unit on truth tables. Let's begin by talking about why truth tables are useful. Here is a complex logical expression on your screen. We have three simple sentences, and we have three different logical connections. We have a negation, and we have two conjunctions. My question to you is just by looking at that, can you tell me when that overall logical expression is true based off of when the component parts are true? In other words, can you easily tell me that this statement is true if P is true, Q is true, and R is true? What about if P is true, Q is true, and R is false? What about if P is true, Q is false, and R is true? What if P is true, Q is false, and R is false? And what about the other four combinations here? Well, because we have three simple sentences, we have two to the third power or eight different combinations. And because we have so many combinations, it might not be the easiest thing in the world for you to be easily telling me whether this statement is true or false based off of those component parts being true or false. And if I made this even just slightly more complicated, say by adding another logical connective, there's an if then now on the other side of the conjunction. Well, this is going to be a little bit more complicated for you to figure out. And it would be even more complicated if I replaced one of these variables or added another variable here and gave you four different variables to work with. Pretty soon this gets out of hand to the point where just looking at it and trying to reason your way through in your head becomes very difficult. And so what a truth table does is allows us to figure out when these things are true or false, when these big and complicated logical expressions are true and false based off of when the component parts are true or false. And it does this in an algorithmic way, something that's simple and something that we can work through very logically step by step and get the right answer. So what we're going to do here is look at how to construct a truth table, and then I'll give you a very simple example. And then later on, we'll look at more complicated examples. So writing a truth table is a four-step process. The first thing that you're going to do when you take a logical expression, a big logical expression, is to break it down into its component parts and write a column for each simple sentence. After you've done that, you're going to create additional columns for each additional more complex expression in order of the complexity. So you build from small to big. You take smaller logical expressions and you write down a column for those and then you create bigger ones based off of logical expressions that you've created previously. After that, you fill in all possible truth values for all simple sentences. And then you go from left to right, again, in order of complexity in each of those columns, using previous columns truth values to deduce the truth values of the current column that you're looking at. And as you go through this, you'll eventually finish because if you go left to right, the right eventually has an end. And once you hit it, you'll be done. So here we're going to look at a very simple example. Let's look at the sentence P or Q. This is as simple as it gets, right? I've just got a disjunction here, nothing more, nothing fancy. So the first step is to write a column for each simple sentence. Here we have P and Q. There are just two simple sentences. So we write two columns for that. The next step is to create additional columns for every more complex sentence in the original sentence in order of complexity. Well, here there's only one more complicated sentence than P and Q, which is the disjoint between P and Q, so P or Q. So we fill in that third column for that. That completes step two for us. So step three is for us to go through each and every single possibility of truth values for the simple sentences. So here we have two simple sentences, so we have four combinations of truth values. So P and Q can both be true, P can be true and Q can be false. P can be false and Q can be true. And then P and Q can both be false. And then we go from left to right, filling in more complicated columns. Here we only have one more column left to go, so this is going to be very quick. You remember back to our lecture on disjunctions, on that OR expression, we know from that that P or Q is true when at least one of those simple sentences is true. If both of them are true, then it's still true. So that means if we look at the first row, we see that P and Q are both true. So that means we'll fill in true for the top row for column three. When P is true and Q is false, that's the second row. Well, at least one of those is true. So P or Q will be true. In the third row, P is false and Q is false. So that means, or rather, 
P is false and Q is true. So that means that the third row of the third column will be true because Q is true in that case. And it's only in this fourth row when both are false that P or Q is false because both of those things are false. So we finish this truth table by writing in that. We see it's true, true, and true followed by a false. So in the first three rows, at least one of those two simple sentences is true. It's only in that last row where both are false. So P or Q is false. So that's how to fill in a very, very simple truth table. And in the next lecture, just to preview what we're going to do in the next lecture, we'll look at a more complicated truth table like that. So here we're going to be looking at the expression not P or P and Q. It's a little bit more complicated. It'll be a little bit more work to do, but it'll be good at reinforcing that step-by-step -step method I gave you to develop truth tables. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.